May, this is where we crown a champion. Will it be the first ever SEA major champion or will it be the first Chinese champion during the regular season? We're about to find out as we head into game number five's draft. Our panel are already willing and able to bring you all of their thoughts and predictions as we head towards it. We're back with Kyle Winter and Jack once more. And uh, Kyle, I want to talk to you about fatigue. Is it real? Is it is it thought about? Do the players even care? Do they even notice going into their eighth game of the day? I think it's certainly a real thing. Uh, at least um, it's so hard to like keep track of like even the games you've already played, like what's worked, what hasn't right. worked. You lose track of the why behind all of your wins and losses. Does it, it, does it become very together. mechanical? Yeah, I mean it's like it's game eight. You know, yeah. like how are you? Do you even remember why you beat VP uh, <laughs> six seven hours ago? So. It it affects both teams, but I think LGD specifically. Mm -hmm. Now they're entering a probably their tenth or eleventh waking hour, seventh or eighth of just Dota, Dota mind. And, um, we're, and we're talking not just you know I don't want to disparage anyone, mm -hmm. but when you're playing Dota at home in your boxer shorts, eight games isn't all that much. But mm -hmm. when you're playing eight high level pro games with this kind of pressure yeah. in a grand final, in a booth in front of everyone, millions of viewers. That's different level, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. I think that they should go back to their bread and butter and you keep things simple. I feel like the games they've lost, a big part of that is Ame really isn't able to... I mean, first off, they're playing against Naga both times. Yeah. And second, Ame wasn't really on a hero that would naturally pressure towers. Obviously, Troll does, but he was like completely countered in that game. And even though they get ahead on all their cores early on, they can't do anything with the lead mm. and they don't have the ability to make or force team fights with their supports. No. So so pick something for comfort because that means less mistakes potentially. Yeah. I think it's just you know, see Chalice every game with an HOD hero, Ame on the tower damage, maybe yep. on the playmaker. I think you go back to that. Okay. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Leshrac come out in game five. That seems to be what LGD turns to. Um, they're banning Nyx every game and I just think that hero is super strong. Okay. Uh, Maneski have got first pick in mm. this final game. How important is that going to be, Winter? Very important, because this means that they are probably going to get like tiny. I think yep. one of those heroes. I think I think both teams really want the tiny very badly. Yeah. Do you think then LGD just ban it? Hmm. They won't want to risk it falling into enemy hands, will they? I think you can leave the next take bounty. They have to choose one of them, though. I'm pretty certain they're never going to give uh, the Prophet. No, the Prophet's been banned all four games. Hard to see how they yeah. suddenly decide in game five it wasn't as important as they <coughs> thought it was at the start of game one. Do you think, think you, they can give up the Omni Knight, perhaps? For that first pick? And that... Mm. No, I don't think you want to first Tough, pick isn't it? I mean, Like we said, they're probably by game five, yeah. they're going to run out of bands. That they want to, they'll have more to ban than they yeah. can ban, and that's pretty much where they're I mean, at right now. This changes stuff up, because I think it's the first game Maneski is first pick. They've been banning Omni Knight, Venno, TB recently. I think you stick with that, even his first pick. You take yeah. the tiny, you leave things open. Uh, if, if they can take the tiny. Yeah, if you're LGD, you could, I think, ban the tiny, leave the Nyx, and plan around that hero, because... But there's also the Underlord as well. Yeah, I think you keep getting rid of that. You get yeah. rid of the... The Prophet cannot be in the game. The Underlord shouldn't be in the game. I and then that leaves potentially a Venno. Well, the Venno's <laughs> getting banned by Maneski. 100%. Yeah. You got to get rid of it. I like their There's bands. almost too many, isn't there, Jack, now? Yeah. It's just what threat do you want to play yeah. against? And Wait, which, one's, which one's less evil to play against? Yeah. I think situationally, though, it's pretty good for LGD. And not just the fact that they have Radiant, but they have second pick, right? So you already have this play style that heavily yeah. favors yeah. protecting your last raid boss, big carry, Ame. Oh, and so team that team goes naturally into that because you will get the LGD. counter pick mm -hmm. at the. We will get the final say in the draft. I like what they did, though. Maneski banning the same heroes, but in yeah. that reverse order. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. By that eighth game, you know their their vision is blurry. They're not really sure what's going on. Hey guys. Hey, there's know. the tiny there you go. Okay. So yeah. LGD were not gonna let yeah. that come out because it would have been a first pick for Maneski. Yeah. That does leave. There's a DP, an AA, a Beastmaster, a Gyro, the Underlord. The Underlord, exactly. I think that's gotta be the first. Well, pick, I think it? I don't think so. I don't think you first pick it. Pass. I think you. But, but do they allow that to go through and let oh, LGD yeah. they do? Okay, I so like they're gonna it. pick up the Naga. It, they've LGD realized. Then. It's all about the BKBs. LGD, every single game, both Ame and maybe, are on these BKB heroes. Naga mm -hmm. has a five-second BKB piercing disable. It, it is winning them games. Mm -hmm. And I really think that's the direction you keep going, especially with Terrorblade out of the pool.
Okay, Tusk Gyro or Tusk Fire Underlord? Tusk Lashrak, and yep. that was called by Kyle. I think it's the way to go. With Nyx, it's because they're banning Nyx. So as soon as that hero's gone, there's no real, like, gotcha counter to the slash rack. And maybe he's proved that he can play against pretty much everything on this hero. I've seen him play against Life Stealers, Jugs, Pugnas. They win the games anyway. And I think this hero gives them and their best player the hero that can impact the game in the best way. Because it, it, it's objectives, it's laning. It's rotations. You saw him use a TP in that deciding game against uh, VP to get here in the first place. All about those teleports with Max Lightning. He runs in, kills people. Yep. They uh, they played the Lashrak, of course, earlier today and two days ago. Mm -hmm. Both times they won. They've beaten Liquid with it and they've beaten Virtus Pro with it. And now they need to beat Vineski yeah. to claim the championship. I might be a bit biased because Lashrak is also my favorite Dota 2 hero. Really? I think I he's in a really good spot. Yeah. Why is it your favorite? Uh, you can just do everything. It's the same reason Underlord is so good in the patch, but obviously it's a disco pony. I mean, come on. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle used to pick it a lot as a support when they, they run at you and yeah. they have this, this uh, flesh rack that takes the yeah. towers. Back in my fight. playing days, it was one of my favorite heroes. A disco pony. It's a lame push out though as a position five. It's five it's nice to have that remaining. as a support. Yeah. Yeah. And it does have that flexibility if they really need it, if it gets yeah. really hard countered in the draft. And that's also why I love it as second pick as the opener. You saw EG use this a couple times. The their only flaw with it is I feel like it was almost always Sumel's hero. Whereas yeah, it's for maybe, but I'm sure that X Nova can play the slash as well if necessary. And it'll allow them to take another core as probably their third pick. And then you have this do you want to core it? Do you want to support it? Just leaves the, your options open. But already, looking at the support duo, this Lesh is going to be core 100%. And since your second pick, you get until the last pick to kind of make that yep. final. Right? Mm -hmm. They don't get to see that. It's also a really good synergy with the Tusk because your Edict and your Nova follow while you're still inside Snowball. It's another reason why the Yoles is such an easy pickup on the hero because you continue dealing damage even though you're... Uh, floating around and vulnerable. Okay, so some uh, some oh, pretty seminal heroes for both teams have been banned out. The Void has gone again. Mineski didn't like playing against that. LGD have removed the Pango. Uh, no surprise in either of those yeah. two bands. We've seen them before. They need to find a good lane matchup, though, against the Lash, if it's a mid hero. Mm. Who do you like to lane against the Lash? Mm -hmm. Apart from I'm the sure, Nyx. though. It's like DK is available, but DK doesn't do I don't think much DK. Yeah, they don't DK into yeah. Lash. Turn Thinking of maybe Viper, Pugna, but I've yeah. seen him do well against Pugna. I, I've yeah. never seen him play against the Viper yet. That could be a go-to. Yeah. Yeah. So it played Saw against the Jug. Oh, Didn't yeah. work very well against that. There's the I, I think Mineski took a gamble, though, because they, they banned the Monkey King, and yeah. the Underlord would have been really good for them as well with the right. Naga combination. I mean... Game is hard. Kind of know that hero is going to be picked, so I'm sure Mineski's got to be ready for it. I like the DP. It's a really solid anti-Underlord hero. Good mm -hmm. synergy with the Disruptor Naga. I just, I hope they've got something ready because they gave away mm -hmm. the Underlord after the Lesh was picked up. We, s This is their Game 3 draft. Yep. They have mm -hmm. three of the same five heroes Time already. for Rubik, man. FY Rubik mm -hmm. again. Yeah. Th this game would, would, would be nice too. They have the Lesh and the Underlord. And there's uh, pretty good spells to steal. There's the Naga. Yeah. There's the Death Prophet. I don't think you give FY Rubik. This is an ex-Nova hero. I want to keep. I want to keep oh, that yeah, on his tusk. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I no, still think right. the. I still think the anti-mage yeah. huskar tingle is there. Yeah. As a I, I think you go AA game. here if you're LGD for that reason. Oh, you're right. You're right. AA. Yeah. Forgot about the AA against DP. Yep. The A against DP. The synergy with the shards. Mm. It's it's so good with Lashrak mm. Underlord. Like it's thirty percent more damage on these heroes that just radiate magical damage. The only other, I could see them pick maybe like a witch doctor or something. I just don't think that that's, is that really what you, the direction you want to go? But why would you pick witch doctor when there's A? Yeah, that's with what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't know. That's the NA Dota in me, man. That hero has won so many games in the region. I just see it when games at this tournament where you're just like, oh, well. Dire team pick. Lion. You know, I had a feeling they might go that direction, but I, it's it's good to deal with like that potential anti mage that we're talking about, but we'll see. Maybe mm. LGD feel like they just need more control because they like picking when they ran this with v against VP. They had disruptor tusk, and if you have AA tusk, then maybe they fall in the same situation you had last game where you just don't have the catch. And there's the mag. Ooh, they might. I don't. They're not gonna ember. I was gonna. Wow. 
So they knew the Underlord was coming. So pairings with Magnus Troll, Juggernaut. Um, They've quite a few, haven't they? That's Jug. And I guess that's really good in terms of only one ban remaining as well. Jug Life Stealer, I'd say, are the options. For Five seconds remaining. I think they'd probably lean towards Life Stealer. Yeah, Life Stealer is great against the Magic. Mm -hmm. It's good in the lane against Underlord. I've seen them play Mag Life Stealer a couple of times. There's the PA ban. Not, I don't think that's what they're looking at. It's a Life yeah. Stealer or a Jug. I'm liking the lineup. Maneski has. The Disruptor seems to be this key hero that just mm -hmm. is winning so many games because it covers these holes in your mm -hmm. draft where you no longer need seconds, much more catch. Uh, as long as you have the ability to take a fight, your the, the window for being caught out of position against a Disruptor is so much larger because you have a glimpse now, not just like some stun. Like the reach provided, there's no other ability even close. Um, they ban the CK, which tells me it's a life stealer pick coming up. Maybe they just want to talk things through a little bit first. They seem like they know the hero. Ten seconds. <coughs> a little remaining. bit of tension in that booze too. Seventy-one has the power. Five seconds remaining. He's just prepping his pick. Are we ready, boys? Yeah. Let's go. It. Here we go. It is the life stealer. Now, what do you do if you're LGD? It's it's Two. hard to pick something like PL because you're playing against a mag. Mm. Two picks in. You would have said LGD had the upper hand in this draft, Kai, wouldn't you? Mm. Now, I love so the much. Lesh. I love the Lesh. It's still it's still a great pick here, but they need... Ten I'm looking at the three. draft from Maneski. I think, okay, how are you dealing with a lifestealer raged and empowered? Five and how are you going to ever take a team fight into Song? This has to be something tanky. Yeah, the Void's banned. It could be a PL. Do they go for a Medusa here, or is that... Uh Oof. I wouldn't mind it. That, that's okay, though. I think Medusa is pretty good with their lineup. Medusa and Underlord, so you hold the base AM for a very long time. AM, yeah. Oh. I was going to call it. Okay. Have a taste of your own medicine mm. with the Arm AM. Um, it's the textbook life stealer counter. Yep. This is part of the reason they pick it up here. Uh, there's very little you can do to an Animage in this game, but... It's going to be one of those, like, Ags games, I think. Maybe even with the BKB. And Ami plays in this style where he just doesn't die. And then he can hopefully deal with the damage and pressure from Maneski's lineup. It's a really tough game to call, but I think Maneski has momentum. And for the first time, I'm going to make my prediction first and right. give Southeast Asia their first major title. All right, Maneski for Kyle. Winter. <sighs> Is this heart and head? Are you it's it's like difficult though. But Hartmaneski head LGD or I think AM AM is not gonna be able to pull this off. I think that that's gonna be too much pressure, so I'm going with Mineski. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I think this is a very difficult anti mage game. Even if he gets to the point where he wants. I feel like there's a lot of ways to deal with him or kill him. So I like Mineski's draft in this game. Okay. Uh sharp intake of breath. Hold on everyone. We're about to enter game number five and the final game of DAC 2018, Maneski versus LGD with everything to play for. Indeed, Red Eye, here it is, the deciding match between these two Titans, LGD versus Maneski, game five, and we are getting that army anti mage coming through Fog. They change up to the series. Can he make this hero work in a, in a meta where others have failed? Oh, he's playing it into Disruptor and Death Prophet too, but there's no other. There's not like crazy amounts of stun. They have these silences to hold him down, though, if they're able to catch him, at least in these early stages. I don't know. It's going to be tough. But Ame, just like the panel said, he likes to play these hard farmers. They don't have. They at least are. They at least have the building damage that can come in from the Lash to claim some towers early on to maybe get this anti mage to get some space. But again, this draft they are lacking building damage, which is a concern. And a hero as well, sort of as the panel said, that at a certain stage of the game, it's going to be very hard for Mushi to deal with, right, in the fights, the uh, a late game AM. Late game, yes. But they have to, he get has to get to that point. And that's where we've been seeing a lot of the, this is the reason why AM has kind of fallen up. Received several nerfs, and also the pace of the game has definitely increased heavily. If they can pull it off. And of course, Omaneski, a lot of fun things to look forward to once again. Ice 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 bringing his Magnus to the foray for the second time this series. Be able to secure themselves the bounce. They know room. he has mana break, so they they're putting do. as much pressure as possible. They're, they're going to go for the body blocks here. Ice 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 coming in from the high ground, and then Nova does hold them back with the stun, but still Ame taking a lot of damage there from that rundown. He's trying to come back in and poke at jabs. 
Out towards Nova. Mineski really playing around with the next Nova. Gets the two miles turn, but Mineski will still be able to get the pull off. Chalice as well, taking a heavy amount of pressure from that open wounds top. Both of them just, they're trying to pull waves. This is, we've seen this every single game in this best of five. For the lanes. Oh, dual lanes, as expected. We've been having it yeah. majority of the time. The last one we did have that try v try for a while, but... Jabs, putting a lot of pressure onto X Nova here. X Nova does have the stun available. Yeah, he feels the necessary need to use it. And we'll turn. Four jabs, jabs. No out of mana. The rotation now, too. The Tusk is coming down. Jabs might get caught off guard because of this. See if FY can find the shards. He'll go for it. And he's he got it. it. Absolutely perfect from FY. The perfect angle, as there's no escape for Jabs. And that's an anti mage getting first blood. Arme with the thanks to give to FY. They made sure to give it to the AM because he did miss a lot of last hits from Dome for that chase. He missed like three, I believe, from the denies coming up from the mag from the creep pull wave. And yes, an AM game. You got to give him everything to accelerate his farm. See how much pressure Jabs and Ice 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 can apply to him. Ice 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 again with the skewer looking to harass Arme as much as possible whilst he is still level one. Without that blink available, still that point in the mana break. He's That's dead. all he's got, and he's dead. Jabs and Ice 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 run him down and punish Arme. Great play come between the two of them. Having this Naga worked out so well for them in the last game. Just the pressure that they can put out with this hero in the laning phase in particular. See how much Ice can get for the lane in response to Mushi Lifestealer, where it's going to be. Definite sort of kill potential for Mineski as they scale up their cores. Bottom lane. Oh, mate. Getting the mana away from Ice Ice Ice. X Nova even goes for mana drain, too. Make sure they can't get spammed down by this Rip Titan from these skewer plays from Ice Ice Ice. Ice Ice Ice. Oh, so a bit oh, of a dream, dream room for him there. All the way back up to full here for the mana. Top lane Chalice and FY. They look towards Boogie. Boogie immediately TPs himself over the tree line. No hesitation there, as he knows that these two can get their hands on him. A few punches will cause a lot of issues. Both side lanes are accomplishing ideally what they want. Ame is getting shut down a bit more than Mushi, but he's got the kill. That first blood giving him a decent amount of gold. And mid lane is pretty much even. This, yeah. is, this is a boring mid lane. Yeah, so there's going to be nuking five. lanes. Nuking lanes versus each other. And this rotation's coming. We see how Fly's starting to make the move in Jabs. Trying to run down onto Nova, but our mate jumps in to help out and pushing Jabs away. Jabs just with a little bit of the extra movement speed will be able to get himself out to the distance. The mid lane unlikely to, to really swing favorably one way or the other until a rotation comes through from either of the sides. Yeah. Both teams. I feel like I've seen this actually in all the games, right? They're just constantly pulling waves, even pulling to the oh. neutrals. Over? He denied himself. Okay. So you see top, Chalice is trying to manipulate creep waves. Bottom, Jab's got the side pull off to deny some creeps from Ame. Pretty much been this, the, that and Dominator has been the story of, of this best of five for me. Right, just trying to take this big creep away from Jab. So Jab still coming with the Riptide. Says that's fine. Jab's Jab getting why? trapped. Again, these shards, allowing them to get a couple of punches in, but Jabs with those boots does have the movement speed to get in and out without too much of a threat. Top lane boogie. At the south cancel. Chalice gets to touch it. Watch the mango and keeps the firestorm. Place down by the tower, forcing that lane and making sure that Mushi has to farm underneath the tower. But as we can see, Mushi dealing very well with the pressure. Somnus in the mid lane is doing excellent versus Death Prophet right now. Has level five, level almost level like, like halfway to six. And Moon's only level 4 at the moment because of these 8 denies. I also do believe that he saw the Tusk rotating in a bit, so Moon was a little afraid of the FY trying to commit for something because he is at risk of dying with those rotations on the Death Prophet. Nova. Because with the stun, they jump forward, they're able to burn a bit of the mana. It's not enough, though, because Ice 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 still gets the skewer back under the tower. They look to dive in as FY snowballs forward, but Jabs is there with the TP. We'll be able to keep Ice 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 safe. Strong attempt there from LGD to try and burn the mana before he could skewer, but he just had enough, Ice Ice Ice. Okay. Quick back up and shrine. Skeet will be able to top themselves back up to full. Kallus also playing a little bit away from the lane now as that Lifestealer is getting that bit more scarier. With the two points in the Feast and the Open Wounds. 
Don't ever want to step too close as an Underlord, especially when he's got backup. Yeah, I mean, we see this from most Underlords. You just go to jungle when you've got that level 2 or level 3 Firestorm, yeah. and you can farm You can farm better. Because in the, in the top lane, you're at risk of dying, and you, you're just going to... You're not really going to get guaranteed last hits versus a Life Stealer when right. there's support there. Movement coming in from LGD supports FY and X Nova, looking to set something up here for Somnus. It's a five-minute wave, so they've got the Siege Creep, too. Have to dive in for this, and Jabs is already around, backing up Moon in case any sort of play comes in like this. And the pings are coming through as well, I think. They're ready to go. So they want to dive this. Moon keeping herself under the tower. They're going to go for it. Straight in under tier one with the shards, the stun, the burst. They've got it. LGD's in, and Jabs unable to do anything about that. He's already headed away from the mid lane. It's all about these timely rotations. It's during those catapult waves, you tend to see a lot of teams make the moves. Not uh -huh. denying that from Somnus. Jabs yes. wanted it with the Riptide, but gets denied. Not quite enough. But the farm continues for Mushi, but the same to be said for Arme, despite sort of those early few waves being contested quite well by Maneski. Now we see the point where Arme, he's getting pretty much free farm now in the AM. And he blinks into Jabs, but they're not able to actually go for anything here. Got 10 charges on his wand, Arme. Not feeling too scared at all. Somnus getting some pressure onto that tier one. So I'm it already bringing it down to about half health. The back of that kill that he was able to get thanks to FY and X Nova. Trying to pressure in top. Location comes out from Chalice. The boogie is still sitting right beside Mushi, just in case any sort of rotation comes through from LGD. And it is sort of starting to as FY will head up towards the top lane. I want to try to make sure to mirror the movements from the supports so they can defend their offlaner. Ninja Boogie's here. FY's here with the snowball, though, if he wants to go for a save. See, they've got the root. Indeed, FY looking to turn things around. Somnus comes in with a TP, finds the stun onto Chaps. And he gets glimpsed back to the mid lane. I think Somnus is actually I, pretty happy with I that. I think he absolutely oh, he is. Even, he, gives him a, he gives a chat wheel. He the absolutely crowd, is. The crowd likes that one. So now having this AM versus Magnus matchup bottom, they're able to move a lot around the map. And Magnus Mushi now top. getting pressured. He's got the Infesto on their creep. And now he can maybe turn. The backup's there from Jab. They have the Reaper instantly. Chalice with the TP out. And FY able to walk himself away. LGD avoid Bineski being able to get a successful return kill. They're doing a great job in this laning phase this time around. Having actual playmakers. Because the last time around, it was very hard for them to make plays. It was pretty much all dependent on Somnus' Tiny. But this time, they have FY on the Tusk. With a much easier scenario to make those rotations. And they continue to farm. He is keeping the mana low of Ice Ice Ice. But it's not I mean, stopping Ice 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 from being able to CS himself. So I mean, Ice, Ice 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 is getting good farm. Yeah, he has 37 last hits. Yeah. He's pretty much neck and neck with Ame. DA, CP come in, FY. Maybe seeing if they can make some sort of a play. They have Xnova coming in from the side, but look at this. With the helm, he scouts out the line. He knows it's there. But is it actually going to be enough information to get him out? The Snowball will miss, as he is now trapped up by FY. Comes in, has the shards. Xnova with the stun. No escape for Ice Ice Ice. Mana Void from Arme secures the kill. LGD making a lot of movements and certainly setting this start of the game up to be quite a beginning for an anti-mage. Yeah. And they have very good heroes to clear waves in this game, too. They have the Last Strike, they have Tusk, they have Underlord. They can keep these waves pushed out so that Ame can get this farm out. Even if they do get on the back foot a lot, they can clear those waves so that the pushes are averted. I think there's quite an early movement from Mushi yeah, on this Lifestealer. He's um, almost got the armlet done, but he, yeah, very early move. I guess they really want to give Disruptor level 6 so they, they can get kills on the anti-mage. These shards, of course, from FY just playing around with Mushi forces him to rage and back away. Yeah, I, I think I actually think that's exactly why he wants to make the moves, because right now they can't really threaten kills onto the anti-mage. Without any silences available, it's very difficult because they lack those actual real disables, so they need Ninja Boogie to get 6 for that Static Storm to get those setups onto Ame to slow down his farm. Looking at all six cores in the game, as you can see on the individual net worth, all six of them within 1k of one another. Very, very close in terms of the farm that they're finding in the lanes. This rotation towards mid, though. FY finds the shards onto Jab Stun. We'll miss here from Somnus, but it doesn't matter. The lightning's enough. LGD get themselves the fifth kill of the game. FY doing some fantastic moves here with the shards. Yeah, you can, you can feel that difference, that, like, they can actually make those moves this time. FY just constantly running around, has a haste through now, says hello to Moon. Be able to block him off. Be able to get the kill, but 
at the least. Getting some punches into Moon, forcing Mineski to react. He's got to be a little bit careful of the glimpse, but with the haste, he can get himself just out of range. Oh no, he actually walks back in. He's got Snowball, yeah. Ah, nice. It was a bait, nice. it was a bait. Nice little it was all a there bait. from FY indeed. He says, glimpse me. And then he gets out his balls. Do they have six yet on Disruptor? Not just yet, so they still can't look for the plays onto Ame. He's about to have it, though, if the one more creep. He's actually walking up to get the experience from the catapult in mid. So he gets that level six. He's got a smoke already, too, so they can move, make that move toward bottom to look for the AM. It gets pinged out by X Nova. It seems like he, they know that they're going to make this move down. New top move sheet. All right, they're going to go for top instead. Mushi. I'm a little scared about it. As, they, as soon as they sort of see Mushi show himself, they, they yeah, worry okay. that he's maybe got back up behind him. As soon as they they depart up top, they start making their way. They want this AM. They're going to get some deep wards down during it as well. But already, LGD, they're positioned for this to they respond. They really are. They're ready for the fight down here, LGD. In fact, they may be the ones to kick it off straight away. Look for ice, but he gets the skewer out. Still, the rest of Mineski, they want to get in on this. They pop the Exorcism, glimpse back onto Somnus. They've got him in the Static Storm, rooted up and surrounded. Somnus in trouble. More TP's coming through, but Somnus will fall. Chalice comes in, immediately looks to Dark Rift himself out, but the damage is Whoa. too much from Mineski. They find two kills out of this, and maybe even more. FY being chased down by the slow from Siphon. Moon looking to finish off another one with the root from Jabs. They'll surely get it. That's three down. On the bottom lane is Mineski come in with the full movement. And despite LGD's best attempts to look to take the fight, they just can't. That was strange by Chalice in particular there. <laughs> TP's down, instantly tries to Dark Rift away, but there's too much damage. You're porting into an Exorcism. Nice, 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 kind of with the bait play. But they, they kind of, they, you know, they knew that play was coming, though. They even positioned themselves down bottom. They just still get caught off guard by Mineski. This is a second tier one tower taken by Mineski, making yep. these early pressure moves. And they, with that movement as well, it's not just to get that tower. They get the deep wards down. They know that Ame, he's, got, he's an AM. He's going to go for battle three. He's going to farm jungle. They're keeping tabs on him to be able to look for those pickoffs. Mushi top. LGD, they're trying to strike back here. And they find the opening straight away. There's the hex. They have already used the one stun. It looks like they don't need it. With a burst from the finger, they have enough. Arcane Rune as well, so that'll come up a bit faster on the line. Attic Storm will be back there for Boogie in five seconds. We'll see if they can do something. Jabs and Moon heading up towards the top to try and put a slowdown on this push from LGD. X Nova's on the high ground. He's going to watch them coming in. Goes for the Hex onto one, stun onto two. Static Storm gets popped down onto Somnus, but he immediately TPs out of it, and there's no way to hold him back. LGD will get themselves out of there. In fact, they're looking to maybe make a play straight off the back of it as towards the bottom. FY comes in with a TP. Snowball's in onto Ice Ice Ice. The Mana Board and Shard's coming down. Alme jumps in. There's the route from Chalice. They hold down Ice Ice Ice, and they take out the Magnus. Great LGD responsive. avoiding a play and making one themselves. Great responsive plays coming out from uh, LGD. I really liked X Nova there, that positioning that he was in. He's like, I'm going to try to tank this gank. And he actually ends up stopping it. And now a TP again, Ninja Boogie. Also with the net. And when Mushi coming with the wraparound, this will be an easy one for Mineski. They pick up the line, but mid lane, Somnus. This Pushing is, in. This is the benefit of having that Lesh. Even though they have AM who can the towers, Lesh has got Edict. And even more deep boards being placed from Mineski from those movements. LGD, they have vision of Ice 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 porting in here. And they go for this. Open up. Got the slow, the root. He can't screw himself out for now. The chain stuns. It's enough. Ice 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 will fall. Can't get out the RP. And Chalice says, we're out of here, boys. This is a smash and grab and run away. But the sleep bye is bye. not going to do anything. And they get themselves driven home by Chalice, despite him being asleep. It's dangerous. Kids don't do it. Get out of there, LGD. That's back-to-back -back kills on Ice Ice Ice. Alme getting closer and closer to that Battle Fury. He's having a pretty good time He's keeping up with that farm. Absolutely getting the space with these sort of movements from LGD. And now Samus able to get a tower now too with that Edict. So able to claim themselves a little bit more map control and give this AM more and more pressure and more and more boosted gold for that Battle Fury.
They want to keep the players going, Maneski. They need to. They have this life stealer against the end. They have to get Mushi involved. Sure, this Every game is a little different in the sense they have the empower, so Mushi can play yes. the farm game to, to sort of some extent. But ideally, they want to get this life stealer stuck in with this early armor pickup. Chalice. The wraparound. They want to they want to keep the static storm. They can kill him without it easily. They need the static storm in order to kill these other two big cores, either the Lesh or that anti mage. Top lane, F Y. Grab the vision there on I side side backing up for that lane ward. Oh, is he gonna try hiding to, around here. He's gonna try to snowball the centaur in. He was thinking about it. If I side side shows, but I side side is playing very careful, keeping himself. They're not playing well the farm. The tower. They're not playing the farm game on these heroes at all. They're like A M can carry this game. We just need to make the space and keep the pressure on for him. FY. Starting to get chased out here with the urn. Tries to shard himself down, oh. but doesn't actually connect. TP. And it's going to be cancelled. They've got the glimpse. Maneski have the catch. FY will be caught out by the patrol from Maneski. By Mushi. Find himself a double damage rune. In terms of people to, to really get him involved in the fights, though, it is really all on a ice 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 getting that blink dagger. Yeah. As other than that, no real other way to sort of jump the life stealer into the center of it all. That blink dagger is there, of course, it is a very potent combo, especially if he's empowered. And yep. you jump in the RP infest and then cleaving down the opponents. Yeah, FY, once that blink dagger comes out on the mag, FY is going to need a blink dagger of his own to counteract that. It's going to be a lot based on these position plays for this tusk to get those saves. And LGD, they've got a smoke. They're looking to stay on that aggressive. Keep the game active for Ame to farm. And they've got Ward Vision, too, of Moon. They saw that he's low on mana. Up in that top jungle. They want to try to catch something out of all this. And again, now Mineski. Every single time they've got Static Storm available, they're looking to make a play as well. See where they head, though. As for the most part up towards the top. Oh, Ame is going to be able to read this. They did see Ame with the ward they'd placed deep. So they could make a play toward the top lane. Well, Mushi, he could show himself bottom during this as well. Nice, nice, nice is prioritizing farming this Blink Dagger mid rather than joining the team, though. So they will not have an RP for this. Here they go, Moon, trying to kick things off for the Exorcism, but straight away Nova responds with the Hex. The Shards forcing Nova back to safety. Maneski trying to look towards Somnus, but Chalice, he's there with the Rift. He's taking them out, and they'll even bring out Jabs on and the way out. Oh, man. The perfect play there, ready for LGD after getting smoked upon. They get a kill, and they get everybody out of there. And it's the Exorcism from Maneski used to. They don't get anything out of it. And Ame just playing the, playing the full far game. He's showing. Got the full Yasher on its way out. I believe so. These, so these saves, saves, these like the, the rift plays have been phenomenal so far from Chalice. Cool Except out. for the one bomb. Sure. <laughs> they are looking towards uh, an illusion. I realize pretty quickly, and we'll see this replay again up top. This attempt quickly put to a stop, and Chalice, no hesitation really, as he looks to get his, his buddy Somnus out of there. Yeah, it's such nice shards too by FY protecting X Nova. At least the Static Storm wasn't expended, so Mineski, they still could look to make an aggressive move with that available. And really, just for that big item timing is that Blink Dagger on Ice Ice Ice, and he's very, very close to it. Yeah. That's what Mineski are, are certainly looking towards in terms of making a big play, and whether it be a, a huge RP in terms of catching off this sort of patrolling full man of LGD or just a solo RP on the Anti-Mage, both are, are going to be huge plays that Maneski could potentially make. Yeah, and they can, if they do get one of those big plays, they can look straight into Roche because they've got the Medallion, they've got Riptide and Empower. Mid lane. FY. They want to play around with this here, they'll go for the Glimpse. He's got the Snowball, but it will be a Snowball onto Mushi, so we'll drag him pretty deep here. He's got the range, Mushi instantly turns. FY tries to shard block himself to safety, but he's not going to be able they to get do the so. They're going to Don't play indeed with the Centaur. They're going to be able to set up a second. Maneski. Get the two supports there of LGD. Now, bring the game even to nine for nine. Less than a 1k advantage at the moment for LGD. And we've seen this in multiple games this series, around the 20-minute mark. Dead even. And then it all kicks off in favor of one of the sides. Yep. The real question is, which way is it going to go this game? And this, this game definitely feels more uh, like one with the, the potential to sort of swing back and forth, with the fact that you've got both of these cores that can effectively scale and farm up 
Mushi with the cleave, Anti Mage with the Battle Fury, and yeah. both teams with very good team fight potential. Yeah, a lot of pressure on Ame to make sure that he can carry this game. Eski. Going to be found out here as they are. Straight away jumps upon FY, finds Ninja Boogie. They've got the stun as well. The Hex, sleep. but the sleep comes in. Jabs. Looking to put a stop to a Ninja Boogie. Will still fall. Isai Sai's looking for the angle, looking for the setup, and he's got it. They've caught the two of them, but the shard's the actually shards? from FY. They're forcing Mushi out the side, so he can't quite get the quick kill. LGD will turn. They'll take down a second. Somnus does still fall. FY rolls in onto the Death Prophet, but the exorcisms out from Moon as Mineski will find a third. Ame silenced up in the static storm right now, too. Can they finish off this kill? They're bringing in Mushi. There's the silence from Moon. They're chasing down Ame. This will be a huge kill for them to fight. Can they get it in time? They can't. Ame oh gets out. Goodness. The buff there from the solo crest. Chalice giving that extra bit of evasion to help Arme survive. So both teams getting away with pickoffs there. You see buyback from either side support, but it's not over yet. Moon being chased by X over this stun will not connect. So Moon will be able to get himself away. Huge amounts of damage there being done by both mid laners, Somnus and Moon, as you can see on the graphs. The overall change, Fairly even exchange it really again. is. It's all about if they were able to get that AM. Ame now has the Manta style I mean, mixed up. I, I really feel it could have gone a lot worse for, for the side of LGD if FY didn't get the shards. It really sort of this, disrupted yeah, this, the follow-up. The, sh the shards were excellent. And Min Ninja Boogie too, he tries to walk in, but he just gets killed by all that AOE damage. Did you see this here, Ice Ice Size, he gets the two of them, but these shards yeah, they just block Mushi off. Mushi has to make the walk around it. It's the extra bit of time that allows Somnus to kick back, get the big spells out, and at least pick up those quick kills in return, so LGD have a chance of fighting back. With some excellent teamwork. And the fact they just couldn't get that army killed, that would have made everything amazing for Mineski yep. if they could kill this anti-mage. But level 17 now, as we saw as well, the, the help given to him from Chalice with the Solar Crest, keeping army safe. Yeah, now, now he's, and now he's much, And now he's much harder to kill, because that Manta can remove the, the Death Prophet Silence. Not, not Static Storm, but... Scan from LGD will hit outside of the pit, so they are going to be under the suspicion that Ski are potentially in there. LGD is smoked up, though. We do have RP back available for Ice Ice Ice. Smoke in uh, sorry, scan in return from Mineski. They know that LGD is sweeping across it. Who's going to get the jump onto who, Moon? His map reads by both sides. Who's going to make the first commitment? Somnus will reveal himself. Starting to come forward. They've got the route onto Moon. Somnus heading in. Ice 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 is looking to hold from the sidelines. He's trying to find the perfect time to jump, but already they're moving in. Moon. They're bursting down the Death Prophet. Moon still alive though. Snowball's there to chase him down. He'll get the self use. There's the RP. Ice 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 gets it, catches the two of them. Mushi with the double. They picked up three Maneski. An army. He's been silenced. He's trying to turn. They've got the root. Can they kill him off again? Chalice looking to bring him back to safety. He, he will. Him out. Chalice oh takes back Arme. But Mineski getting these kills. Ice 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 with the composure there to come in just when needed with the RP. They keep Moon alive and they take down three of LGD. And that was also Somnus dying just after he'd picked up that Bloodstone. So charges have been lost. It almost looked like they were going to get the kill onto Moon there too. But with that hood pickup, just tanky. Just tanky enough versus the Slash Strike, even though FY gets the Snowball to close the gap. And then Chalice, again, with these Uber plays. It's still Arme. This Anti-Mage beginning to tower over everyone else in the game. Exactly the position that he'd hoped to be in. And his Moon team now. have absolutely set him up to be there. Moon now has a BKB, though, so a lot more... A lot more survivable versus that Lash and also the Mana Void. The Mana Void can be a big thing in this game versus DP having that high mana pool and Exorcism costing more and more. Mushi hitting it very hard though with this Des OS and Y while he's empowered. And the game settling is really the. You know, we mentioned it at the beginning, is like the battle of the SEA 5s, and X Nova and Ninja Boogie both sitting at like 2k net worth in almost all these games, barely getting any items. It's all just about that warding game, and who can have the superior advantage in Vision. Neither team actually has a single OBS ward on the map at the moment.
Simoneski there, maybe thinking about smoking up for Roche, but they'll turn and see if they can get an opportunity to find maybe a kill instead. There is that dominated creep within the pit, so. He actually dominates a new oh. creep there. But they might actually yeah. catch LGD up in entirely off guard. I, just before they were going to be aware of it, and indeed they're not hiding over. Maneski are going to get this one for free. Yeah, he took the seeds creep top, so it lost the vision inside the pit. It did die incredibly fast too, though, so it might have been pretty hard for them to contest anyway. Aegis now on Mushi's life stealer. Top lane, maybe seeing if they can get a catch here as Chalice and FY are hiding deep in the trees. Keeping themselves away from Ice 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 as he turns up to lane halfway towards BKB now on his Magnus. Arme on his build, very, very close to having the butterfly. It's gone for the blink cooldown now, too. So, a 3.5 second cooldown on blink to keep oh, that top. Top. LGD. They managed to come out from the trees, look towards Ice Ice Ice, but TPs are coming in. And FY and Chalice can't quite finish off the kill. He is not a squishy Magnus. That is a 2000 health mag. At 15 strength talent, making him just that much stronger. Bottom Another lane, hex. Mushi. He's out on his own. There's the hex into the sun. Mushi's out of mana. He'll try and run himself away. He has got the armlet. Can he really toggle himself to safety? He cannot. That's the age is gone. Nice, nice, nice. Somnus is going to look for the timing with the stun, but he can't quite find it. Mushi gets the chance to rage. In fact, Somnus just looks to the side. He's got the Yule set up onto Ice Ice Ice. They're turning towards this Magnus. Ice 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 trying to keep himself safe. There's the song for Jabs. Moves to be brought into the fight. Do they want to take this? They do. They get the RP down onto this A and M, but they can't quite kill him. The snow was there from FY. Pike type of but they do. They still manage to pick him off. Static Storm control onto Somnus. Ninja Boogie's there, forcing the Bloodstone Deny to come out from the Lesh. Maneski take the team fight and are able to kill off Arme. I think he had like, I want to say like 1.5 or one second left on the Manta from using it bottom to go for the kill. And that age is coming into play there for Mineski, being able to sneak that Roche. Now Mineski, they can take a very easy tier two as they finish that tower off. And the question is if they can try and push for more. There's no anti-mage for 45 seconds. And obviously with Arme going in with the items, he does not have any sort of buyback available. A high ground may not be quite pressured yet, though, as Mineski will simply look towards mid. They now have to take another tier two. They have exorcism in two seconds, though. No RP or song, though. Maneski looks to back off and they're relatively safe for now, as it seems with LGD's full lineup back up in 15 seconds. Now sporting a 3k lead, Maneski off the back of that team fight. That was huge. Whenever you're able to kill an AM in one of these anti mage games, it really starts being a big snowball factor because it's not just like you're getting a lot of gold from killing him, it's a lot of map presence removed from LGD. Mushi getting closer and closer toward an AC now on top of that Deso. Has level 20 for that evasion too. Going to be harder to bring down. And Somnus dying. Like what, two, two times kind of back to back losing majority of his Bloodstone charges already down to six. Been heavily slowed down by the moves of Mineski. Hold on. FY. FY. <laughs> sort of playing around with him there. As uh, he'll be quick to TP himself out of that. Get a bit of the attention of Maneski as they do now have their full lineup down bottom. Trying to push those waves out so they don't let Maneski hit their base. Chalice constantly pushing in top. So FY he goes right back down toward bottom to keep nuking those waves as well. Size so, size, so RP back online. Yeah, they look to make the play. Arme, Chalice, shoving this wave right up to the tier three tower. He's going. He's going for Abyssal Blade next on Arme to make sure that he can actually lock down this Life Stealer and try to pop him before the Rage is able to get off and to disable through that BK or through that Rage as well. Does feel like he might need a BKB afterwards though. Oh, nice, nice, nice. He goes, but there was a ward down here from LGD. The Chalice. Move. Gonna rift down here. They're sweeping across. They do want to try and take this fight if Ice 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 makes the jump, but Ice 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 will be a little, little wiser than that. 
Mineski, Absolutely. they they saw the rift play coming in though, so now they're gonna respond. They're bringing everybody down. See what they can find. Mushi, he's out of ice, ice, ice. They now see Ex Nova, and I believe they caught vision of Ame. The ward will be taken away. And now they want to use that vision that they have to try to look for a pickoff. They saw that Ame used the Manta as well with that ward, but he's too far away for them to get there. But they're making the straight line toward top. They're expecting him to make that move up there. Ame certainly sort of looking towards that wave. They're, they're Will he go him. out into it, though? They'll reveal themselves, Mineski, using the Grip Swarm, so Ame. I don't know that Moon's here. Looks like he's going to try to cut the, ra the wave here. Things starting to settle down once again. Arme. Show. Abs. Thinking about trying to go for a setup with the song potentially. Arme. Putting wave after wave. This blink cooldown. Minus 2.5 seconds. Yeah, able to keep to jump everywhere. Yeah, keep distancing himself. The Bastion now finished. And he's the gold lead has started to diminish again because yeah. of that the space that they're making with that split push. The AM going one lane, other two heroes going another, and I believe the Underlord was also forcing a different one. So showing in three different lanes, in essence. TP in from Ice. As he'll look to try and put a stop to this push from Somnus and FY. Jumps in, has Mushi within him, but Somnus is out and so is FY. They're just they're trying to delay this game, get this anti-mage to that six slot level. It's only getting bigger and bigger, Ame, but that, that warrior will always prevail with the AM in the sense that it is sort of that full protect one. If Ame yeah. ever goes down, there is going to be the benefits for Mineski as they have effectively two very strong cores Ninja in response boogie. to the Ame anti mage. He's got the glimpse, in fact. The catch on him in the static storm, the tripod, but Ame's simply going to turn towards Japs. Moon's here, though, with the silence. He should. Be fine here because Somnus comes in with the stern. Silence is going to wear off. So Arme can blink himself away. Maneski just not with quite enough catch and response to deal with Arme. Whew. As soon as they see the exorcism expended, you see LGD, they try to just ditch away from that fight. Maybe now they can reset and look for something here, but they expected all of Maneski to make the move up there after all that has happened. And again, we see the battle of the Rosh Pit, the dominated creeps going at it. No surprise here. The kill participation a little lower than average, but that net worth. Yep. 10k uh, above the average here from our mate. The Abyssal is a very crucial timing as their anti mage. Sure, he might want to BKB later on, but this is, gives him that kill threat on the majority of these heroes because then he can actually lock somebody down, use that manta to burn their mana, and get the mana void combo. Ice 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 has queued up a refresher, and now an Octarine also finished up for Moon. Getting that level 20 also is making this Death Prophet quite a lot tankier. 2,600 HP, even though he has 1,880 mana. And Mushi now going for the MKB to counteract that butterfly of that anti-mage. And just the constant battle of map control, pushing lanes out, and watching, keeping tabs on that Roche Pit which will be respawning in about 55 seconds. Keeping down bottom now, X Nova. He will hold their own inside their area of the jungle. X Nova saw that, uh, you know, Ninja Boogie has a Glimmer Cape, so he's like, I really want a Glimmer Cape of my own, man. He's got the cloak. Oh, he's got that. a cloak now. It's on his way. Empower on the Wild Wing Ripper there to help him out against Carty <laughs> in this uh, exciting 1v1 in the pit. Dude, it's, it's actually been happening for the last like 10 minutes, just constantly taking creeps and throwing them in there. Game has become quite a farm game. And LGD have closed the gap down to pretty much zero on both net worth and experience. Very, very close indeed so far. It's it's game five, right? It's like, game no five. One, these teams want to take minimal risks. Everything on the line here for these two teams who made it, of course, so impressively far here at DAC. Would hurt a lot to lose it all now. Look at this on FY2. He's start, been starting to get a decent amount of farm, has that 90 GPM talent too, has the Yules and the next item.
the big one versus the life stealer. Absolutely. That disable versus it goes through the rage, able to just punt him out of the fights constantly. You can get in sort of with the counter play after a good RP, jumping forward, a kick out, a protective snowball, so many ways that yeah. if FY can play at the top of his game, we'll be able to respond to any sort of jump in from my side size. Ame gets you on him. Can they catch him? Silence. The silence. Get the blink out, but they have the glimpse. Instant glimpse. Looking to control him here, and they have got him. And that's 90 seconds. He had finished the Abyssal Blade right before that kill. You're going to see LGD. They're just going to push out the side lanes as best as possible. Try not to let Mineski get anything out of this kill. But Mineski, they even held the RP there. They only oh, had to commit to static stuff. And instantly moved. He's looking for more. Somnus with the self fuels, FY is there, but can FY really help out Somnus? The BKB's out for Moon with the Exorcism, they want this kill, they're gonna get it! The Dark Rift not available in time to take Somnus back to safety, will only be FY that's brought out back to base, but indeed this minute, a rush. very, very scary minute for LGD. Yep. Losing the Anti-Mage, losing the Leshrat. Mineski getting the Dream pickoffs, and now the Aegis. How much can Mineski achieve in this little window that they've managed to open up for themselves? Can they at the least take a tier three tower? It just doesn't feel like LGD can take these fights. They're just trying to delay and delay. But at one point, you have to be able to take a fight in this game. And now versus Aegis and Cheese, they don't have their cars either. Mineski threatening that high ground. Here comes the push with the Empower as well. Punching through these towers. Fortification comes out for the time being. Very close to having the two cores back in the game, LGD. Mushi, he rages, he's up there, and he's found the tier 3 tower, opening up the base, and Mineski will play it safe, they back off. They want those shrines. Their side lanes also are kind of being pushed in too. They got a lot out of that though. All the way back down to that 6k gold lead, 6k experience lead too. It's only getting LGD. to this point where for Arme, he may have to sort of tone down the, the solo pushing out the lanes as the catch from Mineski is pretty impressive. Yeah, I think eventually they, they really do have to try to take these fights. They can't just be playing like this because they're going to get caught off eventually by this RP, which is just going to get worse and worse because there's going to be two RPs at one point. They're looking to strike back. They've got their eyes on towards Mushi jumping forward, but Mushi does get the rage out in time and the rest of Mineski are coming forward to back him up. Ice, ice, ice. Oh, he's looking for the setup here. They've got the song onto free. Ice, ice, ice getting in the midst of it all. Pop the BKP. They've got the control onto Arme. He's stuck in the storm. He's getting rooted up as well. Can they finish off in time? The skewer, they're doing everything to control it, but Arme still alive. Can he get out? He can. Oh Blinks away. God. Arme survives through it all. Thanks to the buff up from Chalice. Chalice coming in with the Crimson Guard on the Solar Crest, keeping his anti mage alive. FY rolls across. They look towards Jabs. Jabs never came tough. Gets himself away. Mushi chases down Chalice. Maneski, the fine one. But Arme survives. LGD looking to get the rest of them out of there, and they will. Did he, um, did he, he abyssal the, the, the illusion or the, or the creep there, I think? Because they tried to make a jump onto Mushi, but they get completely pushed away and lose their Underlord. Making sure that, that Arme can say and We'll see this again with the replay, Fog. Which is, what is the abyssal? I think he abyssals the Naga illusion, right? So they snowball, he blinks, and yeah, they abyss on the Nog Illusion. Yeah. He already, he does have an Aegis and everything too though, but I mean, he's lucky to get a, get out from that. Like you said, he gets buffed up from both that Solo Crest as well as the Crimson Guard, just keeping him alive. It was looking very scary. And that fight could have certainly got a whole lot messier though. Just one hero dying amidst all the chaos. 8k gold lead now for Mineski and the experience getting more and more in their favor. Oh, may of course, this game taking the uh, Mana Void, reduced cooldown, Spell Shield. Not really too many sort of magical damage outputs no. coming really from Maneski's lineup. It's, it's mainly the physical he's worried about. And having that extra Mana Void in a team fight certainly do all world of, of good, especially when you've got, you've got two ways of getting the mana out of Maneski with that line on your side. It's very hard for them to take the fights, though, as we've been mentioning. Trying to, they have to catch one of these big initiators before they can actually get those spells off. Getting that Abyssal Blade on, like either the Disruptor on Magnus, just trying to kill them off before that fight starts. And it's, I mean, it's getting scarier. Like we're saying, we've seen Ninja Boogie now. He started to take priority and farm over the Naga. It's getting, in. getting close to an Agonims on Disruptor. They're looking to FY. Chalice pops the Crimson Guard. Can FY get himself out of this? He's got the Snowball looking to buy time for that blink to come off cooldown, but Chalice, he's going to be the one to get punished. Ice 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 gets him with a quick skewer. Again, Maneski finding 
the Underlord. Does have buyback available. See if Maneski can try and force this out of him in this minute. They've got an arcane rune on the Death Prophet as well, so with that exorcism, they could oh, just threaten this high push. ground. Yep. They still got that Aegis. Forcing that buyback. buyback. Straight away. Mushi. Going to get some damage on with the Rage. There's the exorcism. Moon looking to try and silence the backliners. Moon just standing his ground. Working on this melee rax. Can they finish it off with the Ghost? Quick link back from Moon. Quite finished it as of yet, but the Rage is back up. Mushi comes in. He gets punched, but he's able to stand his ground and find the tab and the racks. The melee racks are gone. Maneski getting in, getting out, utilizing that time, forcing out that buyback, and now standing at a 9k lead. Getting the advantage as LGD are struggling to bite back into these plays that Maneski are forcing. They just can't get any, they can't make any plays. They can't get any return kills. The last time that LGD has actually gotten a kill was 20 minutes ago. Oh. That is indeed a big <laughs> slowdown in action from LGD. And they, 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 they just can't take the fights, right? You see Maneski, they're yeah. constantly moving around as a unit and their heroes are pretty hard to pick off because of that. Delame, he is that big old AM. If they can somehow enable him in the fights, he can go off. But as we see most of the time, it's just been sort of a panic from LGD as they try and get Ame out of the skirmishes. Yeah, and it's it's really like him versus the world too at this point now. The Lestrak, Somnus gets killed very, very quickly versus all this physical damage that's coming out from Mineski. And carrying Solo as an anti-mage versus these heroes. And now an Aghanim's finished as well on the Disruptor. It's looking very, very difficult for LGD. Pull out Bissell from Mushi. He is. He's terrifying. I mean, as we've seen with the Empower, Mushi has done an excellent job of keeping up with Arme's farm. Yeah. He does have an Invis. Well, has to be careful. Oh, wants to get caught out alone. He cannot afford to get caught out alone. It's getting to the point as well where will have to conserve that buyback gold. I'm glad Ame did this. I've actually been kind of waiting for it. He was had the Scotty queued up for a while, but now he's realizing he absolutely needs a BKB to actually be able to focus fire on any targets. Sure, there's going to be the net. That's going to be extremely annoying, but he there's too many silencers. There's too much control coming out from the side of Mineski. That's to just make sure that he gets it out before that static storm comes into play, yeah. you know, as we just pointed out. But uh, yet to, to sort of invest in the BKB, is it, he is holding onto his gold. Now we'll get it. That BKB does not have money for buyback. Still quite a bit short of it. But we'll have to play pretty careful because as we've seen, if Mineski can take a team fight, they can push with quite some power having the Deso AC build on Mushi. Mineski again. Incredible punch. They're smoked. They see FY in the mid lane and Ame. Ame's the big one. Jabs, looking for the setup, goes for the song. Ame already blinking himself out of range. FY, the only one to get caught here. He's already used the blink, so there'll be no escape unless the Dark Rock can Oh, he doesn't quite get close enough, Chalice! And he committed for his full Aghanims, too, so no buyback, 50 seconds. Oh! He, or he's down for 50 seconds, sorry. He didn't quite get in range. Nope. That's not the catch. They ideally wanted the AM, though, with that. The sleep into Naga, Naga ulti, there's no way to get out of that. You can't get any of your spells off, or your items off, before that Disruptor Aghanims hits you. And now a DD rune has spawned bottom. Oh. Mineski, with all this map control, gonna benefit a lot from these two rune, double runes, and also all their waves are pushing in. Mushi now packing about 483 a punch. There's a life stealer. You don't want getting anywhere near your barracks. Mineski. Gotta watch out. There's no sleep right now for 15 seconds, but that sleep into Static Storm is always gonna be a threat. 10 seconds till those are up. Here come the Ghosts and the Rage. Fortification comes out from LGD. They have FY back up. How do they get stuck into the fight, though? They've got to somehow find a way of getting Arme in there. Back in they go. FY's got the kick. 
Kicks Mushin pretty deep. Arme coming in for the back lines. Drops the Abyssal Blade down. He's looking to take out the Naga Siren. Jab still alive for now. She looks to jig around the tree lines, but then flies in with the Stone Red Bow. Oh, but there's the, the, the RP. The Abyssal is well. The Holy Arme down, but it's not enough. The Bash comes through for Mushin, but still Arme. Able to blink himself. Send again the kick. FY kicking up to the high ground. Mushin into the base. Looks towards Chalice. Chalice has to go center for the Bash. damage he's there for Moon with the Siphon. The Crypt Swamp. They take it down. Chalice. He's got no back for the buyback. Comes out from X Nova. I'm gonna get and Sonus. They look for the stun, but they've lost Arme. Arme down for 100 seconds without buyback available as Maneski ready to go all in. They buy back on Ninja Boogie. They're ready to commit with the full push. Maneski all five alive. FY again looking for the kick into the Hex. They're trying to control up this life stealer. Slow down the damage that Mushi can do to the barracks. FY into the snowball but still they're without two cores for at least a minute LGD and Maneski know this. They'll clean up the bottom racks. They'll sweep across towards the top lane. Maneski ready to take everything. Maybe even the championship title. FY trying his best to slow the down, but he gets skewered back. The Yules is up. They'll surround him. FY will fall as well. The song in the back too. They're looking for Somnus. They've got the eggs. They've got the static They've storm. They've got the control Somnus. Is he going to be able to get himself out? The shards from FY who didn't manage to survive. It's not enough. Somnus will fall. Three cores dead. 40 seconds until Arme's back in the game, and Maneski know they're going straight for the tier fours. They're looking to close things up here at TACFI again with the kick. 30 seconds, no anti mage. They just can't slow this down, LGD. Maneski, they the Southeast like Asian it. legends, they absolutely are. Mushi rips through LGD. The ancient will fall, and LGD are your DAC Major 2018. Losers. Losers. Mineski wins. <laughs> Mineski wins. SEA, Dota. It seemed like they had such a firm control of this game, though. For, like we said, 25 minutes, there wasn't a single kill for LGD. I mean, Mineski, this team, you all know them, you all love them. Ice Ice Ice, Jabs, Mushi, Ninja, Boogie, and Moon. What a journey they've been on here at LAN. I don't think anyone. Or at least most people expected this team to come out of the top, let alone take the championship title. But they've done it. Maneski fans around the world can be so proud. Southeast Asia as a region will be watching from home. Such and unbelievable. going absolutely crazy for this. Such unbelievable improvement from Maneski. In the last couple weeks, them putting on that strict regiment from 71 has absolutely paid off. And look at that as well. I believe we saw a smile there from Ice Ice Ice. Normally a very sort of stoic man with his emotions, but even he can't hold it back here. As Maneski, your 2018 DAC Major Champions, they'll head to Roche. They'll claim the Radiance. What oh, a Jeff, performance. Jeff's swing, Jeff swinging at his teammates. <laughs> Oh my god. They must feel incredible right now this, after that. This sort of victory. And they did it with Mr. E Home 71 as coach. China made it somehow, but SEA is a region. They're the winners here today. As there is no doubt about it, Mineski outperforming everyone that they went against here at Lab. They kept themselves in the upper bracket. They beat down LGD once, and they beat down upon them once again here as they win the grand finals. Three to two against LGD as we'll pass over to the stage and over to Jack to hear some words from Mineski. First, congratulations to you guys. Probably the best result you have for the club history of Miniski. So I just want to quick ask everyone about their, what is going on in your mind right now, Jeps? Uh, I feel like very crazy right now. Like this is our first my, uh, major we win. Yeah. So we, so we play under pressure this, I mean this game. Like they always got the MNT first game, third game, and then we won back fifth game. 我知道比赛的话有很大的压力，然后我们还是顶住了，最后在一三五的比赛里面终于拿下了这场比赛的胜利。好的，那么接下来就是我们的颁奖仪式，让我们掌声有请我们的颁奖嘉宾，来自完美
肖峰先生将为本届亚洲邀请赛的冠军送上的是我们传统的专属礼品，来自于 DAC 定制的专属印章。来，我们小伙子们选一位做代表接过我们肖峰先生颁发的礼物。So here we have the. Oh, what are they getting? Some special gifts here for the side. Oh, those are. Those are pretty cool. What are they? I can't really tell what they are. Those are pretty awesome. Though. Oh, oh! So these are some special stamps here for Maneski, uh, with each of their players' names on them. A special award here. So well deserved. Absolutely. This is what they were playing. Yeah. And that right. Look at the size of that radiance. Do they do they take that home too? That that radiance weighing. I believe 10 tons. The Ninja Boogie handling it with ease. Oh, that's and is of course the trophy. That is the trophy. You get to take that home. I get, mean, getting good, that through, getting that through the airport good. might be a little bit problematic, but that is that is an awesome trophy. It is. I mean, I hope they get to take the Roshan as well. That'd be pretty cool. The Roshan is. Maybe in I think that's what you want in your office. Maybe if they have them both, if they're both together, right? Maybe that's going to be suitable to pass through. Well, there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, Maneski. A very well-deserved victory and a very hard-earned one as well. You could tell that this team put the effort in. We've seen yeah. sort of through the DPC period, Maneski at the start, they sort of had these early sort of shimmers of hope. Then sure. they sort of started to slumber, not make it necessarily to all the lands, but here they go. They get to DAC. They play their way through, staying in the upper bracket. And you have to give a lot of credit. You really have to give so much credit to 71. 71. He was absolutely crucial for this team. And here we have, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, the current DPC standings now updated off the back of Maneski taking the top spot and LGD getting second place. And of course, with that win, Maneski now pushed up to fourth place here in the DPC standings as they'll enter the new top four now with VP Liquid Secret. And now Maneski. And I think if I'm not mistaken, I was reading, I think Nahaz or Knox, one of them were tweeting out, I think the break off is like 3,200 or so. So this may have really just pushed them, them pretty much into TI. It really is. And I think, you know, this is this is something that a lot of people at home are going to be very excited about, seeing sort of this success from the Southeast Asian side. You know, Maneski, a team that, you know, for as long as sort of Dota's been around, they've always had the fan base. This is oh, a team definitely. that people have loved. And, and sort of this, this sort of collection of players with having like the ice size size in, sort of the, the greats from the old and relatively the, sort of the newer players in terms of the grand scheme of Dota 2 as a professional sport, being able to find this perfect, perfect combination. And the way, as you say, 71 has 71. been able to bring it all together. Yeah, I mean, they, they have to be so, so happy. Everything kind of worked out for them in favor. They even, got, they even got this beautiful patch too, right at the beginning to kind of solidify them, to get like open up their, more of their picks. Having this Pango available really helped them a lot of the times. Just an absolutely great performance from Ineski. It really was. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is it from us here at DAC 2018. We leave knowing that Maneski are comfortably in the DPC top four, as you say, with a very strong outlook in terms of securing their place at this year's TI. I've been Odie Pixel. This has been Fogged. Thank you very much for joining us, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll hope to see you at the next DPC event. A big shout out, of course, to everyone behind the scenes who was involved in making this show a reality. As I'm sure you'll all agree, back at home, it has been a very smooth experience uh, with minor delays, excellent work from all the lads and ladies here in China, and of course the PGL team that came over to make sure that we could bring you the best coverage possible of Dota 2. So keep playing the game, boys and girls. We'll see you next time.